episode number three. So this is gonna be a very short session. We're just gonna go grab our harvestables. So it's been over eight hours. It's been about 10 hours or so. Let's grab our harvestables, do a couple quests, and then call it a night and wait for the daily reset. So that's what we're gonna do. Nothing too glamorous, nothing too famous or anything. Uh, we're gonna go over a little bit more topics too. So, you know, yes, this is a 100% free to play series. And yes, this is to show that you can earn in game, you know, blue salt, 100% free to play. Uh, is it possible to do this? Yes. Is it, should you do it? No, you definitely should not. In my opinion, you should not play this game free to play. You should invest in this game if you want to play this game at all. 99% of the people, this is all just made up by me, but this is my opinion, 99% of the people that play this game free to play will not make any money whatsoever. They will not earn enough blue salts. Oh, we need to go over here and do this quest. To cash out or anything, or they'll need to deposit a bunch of blue salts. Yeah, 99% of the free to play players are not going to make any money. 1% will make money and will be able to cash out and, yeah, have a great time. So, let's talk about that 1% and who those 1% are. The 1% are the really smart people that understand economics, understand, you know, supply and demand, uh, you know, guides, tutorials, find a niche market, niche market that they can exploit you know yes the word exploit goes around in arc age a lot uh, but that just means take advantage of like if you find a market that is incorrectly priced for example a lot of the things that we're going to do later on in the series once we get some blue salt is it's going to be around the auction house because that's the only way you actually earn blue salt in this game is by selling items so in order to sell items we have to find items that are mispriced. So we're gonna be buying items on the auction house and then we're gonna sell them at the correct prices. So we're gonna be searching in the auction house. We're gonna search say like logs, for example. And we're gonna see log is at 0 0.0189, 0 0.192, 0 0.198. And we're gonna check the sales history. We're gonna see, okay, how much does a log really sell for? Is this the correct price? So we're gonna study this. Then we're also going to go and we're going to go into here and go lumber because you need to know the game systems. So five logs equals one lumber. So does that price add up? Does five logs equal 1.2? No, we already see a, you know, a disparity right there. So let's go back and look again. So we have the lowest price of 1.2 for the lumber. This is 1.89. So if we multiply 1.89 times five, that's going to get us approximately, you know, 0.1. And then we could sell it for 1.2. But the thing is, you have to know that there's a 10% auction house fee. So when we take that out, that means we'd be profiting 0.8 BSLT for every log that we convert into a lumber at this price. So that's actually not bad. Like any kind of profit that you can make is not bad. So we're going to be finding those things and converting them. Sure, it takes a little bit of labor, but you have to use your resources extremely, uh, you know, wisely, extremely careful as a free to play player if you want to play this game and earn money. So, the basics of this is that Arc World, you can earn money at, you can, but you have to treat it 100% like a job. If you're not treating it like a job, if you're not putting the time, the effort, the dedication into studying, learning the game mechanics, finding uh, you know things that are broken, finding you know cheap items that are underpriced, and flipping them for more, or farming you know farming coin purses and opening them and selling the loot, getting lucky also like getting lucky is a big thing. So if you are in a raid, uh, you know getting lucky and winning rolls, that is how you make money. All these things are the keys to actually making money in Arc World. It's not having fun PVPing and interacting with the community and things like that. Like, if you're here to have fun and to play the game, you're most likely not gonna make any money. And then it, once again, you'll fall into that 99% of people that are not gonna make money because your focus is playing the game. There's a big difference. So you have two different types of people here. You got the people that are trying to make money, trying to grind out and make as much money as fast as possible. And then you have the other people who are playing the game and just trying to have fun. So there's those two people that are at odds with each other. You cannot really do both at the same time. 
Because if you do try to play the game and have fun, everything that you do for fun is actually gonna cost you money. So like repairing your gear, for example, is gonna cost you Archeum, which costs you money because you could have turned that Archeum into you know real life cash, into BSLT. So the two things of playing the game for fun and then casually making money kind of are contradictory to each other. So you have to decide, are you here to make money or are you here to play a game? And both of those questions give you a very, very good answer. It's like, okay, I wanna be making money or I wanna play to have fun. And the, the best way to do both of those things is to actually throw some money into the game and then start from there. So you're gonna see, my guess is that it will take about 30 days to get 450 BSLT on this account. 100% free to play, that's my guess. It may take a little bit more, may take a little bit less, depending on how lucky we get, uh, but that's my guess. So my time is way better spent doing something else, doing a job, making money, than to grind out spending you know, 60 hours a month trying to get 400 BSLT. Like, I would make more money doing something else, so it's not efficient for me to actually be doing that, right? So rather than do that, I should just put the money in, buy the land, buy the house, and then start playing to have fun. And that's the same thing too. If you want to play to have fun, you're gonna have a lot more fun when you don't have to worry and penny pinch about Archeum cost or, or labor. Like if you're trying to have fun, you wanna open up coin purses. You wanna open up the, the boss drops that you get. You wanna repair your gear. You wanna go PVP, you wanna go battle. So all that stuff is gonna cost money. Like it's, all this stuff is BSLT sinks. They're all sinks. It's designed to get people to spend money and buy BSLT. That's the whole purpose of the game. The game company wants you to spend money. We need rainbow gas. So you have to decide, are you gonna be treating this as a you know job, quote unquote? Or are you gonna simply be playing and trying to have fun? And so the answer here too is, the funny thing is if you're trying to play have fun, then you should probably just play Arc Age. Arc Age has more content. Um, the only downside to Arc Age is that there is a bigger level disparity and bigger gear disparity. Um, but yeah, like if you're trying to play have fun, you should probably not play this game. You should probably play Arc Age if you wanna play a game very similar to this, but has way more content and way more stuff, right? But if you are here to make money, again it's a lot easier to start off so like we're, we're wasting and essentially we're wasting 30 days probably to get to a point where we're actually have just spent in so what is it 450 bslt 450 bslt is what is that it's approximately 200 dollars right now at the current price okay so we're gonna spend you know 60 hours a month's worth of time give or take to make 200 bucks is my guess I mean, it could take two months to do this. It might take a lot longer, right? But I could progress further and faster. So like, so on my main account, let's talk about my main account. So I've spent, I invested in this game um, approximately $6,000, all right? So I bought fandom cards. I bought, um, I didn't buy land NFTs. Land NFTs were given to me because of fandom cards. But I bought that. I bought the pre-package, which was fifty dollars times three, so one fifty. And then I also purchased uh, about eight hundred dollars worth of BSLT early on. So all in all, six thousand dollars approximately, a little bit less. But my total assets and what I have for a playing two weeks is approximately ten thousand dollars. So all the BSLT that I have all of the NFTs that I have, if I sell everything right now and completely cashed out, the total value that I have is approximately $10,000. Maybe a little less, maybe nine, five, but you get the idea. So for all the time and effort that I spent in the game, now my, my time is actually worth something. So my time is essentially now worth about $3,500 of profit right there if I cashed out, right? So instead of grinding it out, trying to make $200 
in a month or two, if you put a little bit of money in, your results are going to be different. They're going to be you know, crazy different also because so anyone that bought BSLT, for example, if they bought BSLT straight up and didn't buy fandom cards or didn't buy NFTs or land or any of that stuff, then they actually would have made a lot more because the BSLT price was, you know, 15 cents and now it's at like 45 cents, right? So anyone that bought just straight BSLT, like just, I'm going to buy this game, I'm going to buy BSLT. They tripled their money. So if they put $10,000 in, now they have $30,000, right? Like they made, they made bank if they cash out right now at the current prices. So, you know, obviously I picked the wrong, you know, wrong method to invest per se, but you never know. Like you don't know what's going to be valuable. You take educated guesses and you see what happens. And so I'm actually really, really happy. Like, cause I play this game more for fun, but I see the realization that like to have fun, you need to put some money in. Did I need to put five thousand, six thousand dollars in? No, I didn't need to, but I had the means to do that. All you really need is just one house, one land. But I'm like, okay, I actually like Arc Age. I really, really, really like Arc Age. Like, Arc Age has been a big part of my life for the last like ten years almost. I really like the game. I don't like the company. I don't like Excel Games, but I really like the game. The game I think is great. I believe in the future of blockchain technology, and I believe this system that they have is the correct way for blockchain NFTs to be implemented into MMORPGs. So I'm 100% behind their vision of what is going to happen in the future with this game. I hope that everything that they say in their white paper is true and that it's going to you know, evolve into that and progress into that and we get to the states you know three years from now like i hope that i'm still playing arc world three years from now i hope that the content comes i hope that the you know game thrives and the systems work exactly how they intended to i hope we get user created content i hope that we get dao that we get voting rights and so forth like i hope all this stuff comes to fruition so, and, and, you know, like I said, I truly believe that that is where the MMO genre should go and that it's a perfect fit because a lot of gamers don't have money and they want to play for free, but they want to bitch and complain about the cash shop and how it sells power and this and that and like it's not fair, right? So a lot of the gamers complain about the cash shop. They want it only to sell cosmetics. Well. Any game that has tried to sell strictly cosmetics in the MMORPG has pretty much failed. They have to sell, you know, power in the cash shop. Otherwise, the game dies. There hasn't been any successful MMORPGs that has done a strictly cosmetic cash shop. So, this is the best system that allows for the game company to not sell power and then also to provide a free service. So say with you what you want, like getting up to tier three and playing for free, uh, yeah, you get you get stuck. Like you won't be able to progress after tier three in your gear. You'll be you know eleven thousand gear score. Or so if we just play the game for fun and not, and not care about the money aspect of it, but that's still not bad. Like most of the characters in the top one hundred are still like twelve thousand. Like the only people that are are higher are what the top ten players. Number of top 15, top 15 players are over 12,000. So there's only 15 people in the entire server that are really going to give you any problems whatsoever. Like 15 people. And those people, you actually have to just be like, okay, whatever. You know, like they spent 10 grand or they spent five grand or they spent 20 grand on their character. You know, they make the game free for me. Like they allow me to play as a free to play player. So you should actually be thanking them in my mind. It's like they allow you to play this game for free. You're not going to be the best player in the game. You're not going to be the, the most wealthiest or the richest or the strongest or any of that. But you can play and enjoy the game for free, you know, up to a certain point where you hit the paywall, where eventually that paywall will go away. So right now we're at paywalls of tier four gear, right? So a free to play player can't really progress their gear past tier three. Like you're out of Archeum, you don't get Archeum, you don't really get labor, you don't have enough materials to upgrade to tier four, right? 
you need the blue Archeum core. Well, almost everyone still needs that same thing too. And you can see people, their gears are all just broken, right? People don't have Archeum. Like even the top players, they don't have Archeum. So everyone is in the same boat as you, like everyone. Eventually, when new content comes out, they will be dropping more blue Archeum cores. And the Archeum core is a free drop in game. Like all you have to do is complete the contest, the, the, co the content, and you could potentially get that drop. So you can progress free to play, but you just need those drops. Once the game makes the drops easier to get, so once they start making the blue Archeum cores easy to get, then there will be a lot more players that have progressed. The price will be a lot cheaper because it's a lot easier. So the price is very, very expensive right now because it's really hard to get. And only the, the top whales are the ones that are willing to buy it. So it's all supply and demand. Once there's more content and these drops become easier, then everyone will progresses and moving up. It's going to be a pyramid, right? It's, you know, people say it's a pyramid scheme and it, in a sense it is the top player is always going to be the top player because he spent the most money. Like that's gonna, that happens in normal version MMOs also, where there is no, you know, pay to win per se, right? If there's a gear score and there's any kind of trading or any kind of activities, the top player on the server, the strongest person is, you know, nine times out of 10 going to be the person who spent the most money by buying power somehow in the game, by buying looting rights or by buying, you know, friends and guildies that have buffed them up and like supported them, giving them all the items and so forth. Uh, so like always going to happen like this. You're going to see top player and then it's going to trickle down slowly but surely. And then it's going to be the majority of the players are going to be free to play and have about the same power. So I don't like I get that people are upset that this guy is unkillable. Like we can't kill him. We can't hurt him like that sucks, right? I get it. It sucks. You can't kill him. He, he's a god in this game, but he spent probably 20 grand. He made the game free. Like if, if this guy did not spend 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand, whatever he spent, if he didn't spend all this crazy amount of money on the game, the game would have to have a box cost. The game would have to have a subscription fee, right? It's so like the game company would need to be paid. You have to pay the game devs somehow. Like you have to keep giving them money, otherwise they shut the servers down. So these players are the ones that are paying the dev salary. These players are the ones that are keeping the servers up. So this is why all the games have to make money. Like it's all a business, right? It's all a business. So that's just something to think about as a free to play player, you know, when they get angry and upset, like, yes, as free to play players, you want more, obviously you always want more because you know, you're greedy. <laughs> Everyone's greedy. And rightfully so. You, you want to enjoy more content. You're upset that you're not getting, you know, everything out there. You're not, you're not getting the best gears and the best, like, you feel like second class citizens. But you have to put in perspective that, like, you haven't paid them anything. Do they owe you anything? Like, they're giving you a free game. And if you don't like it, just quit. Like, there's tons of other games out there that are free to play also in this world. That, you know, if, if you're not having fun in this game, you don't need to play it. You don't need to stress and worry. Anyway, so this is episode three. We're going to call it quits here. We'll come back tomorrow with the daily reset. We'll grab our crops. So another big tip, if you are here, is to look into this area also. Because after, I believe, three days, I don't know if the system is exactly the same, but after three days it was an Arc Age, these crops became public. And so anyone, if they were abandoned, could go up here and harvest. So if you run around in the public farm area here, you might be able to find harvestable trees or pens or items because someone has abandoned and quit the game. And then you can harvest and collect those materials. So that is another big tip for free to play players to earn materials is by checking these public farm areas because you might get really, really lucky and find some free stuff. It does cost a little bit of labor points to harvest. I believe it's five labor points to harvest. But as you can see, we have 164. And every day when we do our daily quest, we're gonna get more labor points. So 
those are some huge tips that will help you as a free to play. This was a very interesting rant here of episode three, but hey, this is the Let's Play series. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, love to hear from you guys again. Thanks for watching as always. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.